Yes, which I actually think that maybe the new cover should be banned. I think that should be in favor <laughs> of that. Oh, that's true. That's it's true. not the cover I remember from the 80s, no, no, or 70s. No. No. I think that like looked like someone just like laying on the bed or something. Like that. You, you would think that Judith Blume wrote the Anarchist Cookbook because she'd been banned so many times uh, through so many uh, various school districts. Um, so uh, what I want to ask you then was uh, why this book? And uh, why do you think particularly what was it uh, offended so many uh, people in authority? Um, I think it was a really radical book at the time because, and, and even now, because it is the story of a girl who's a teenager who's like really autonomous about her sexuality. Like she's just making choices to have sex or not, and so are the women around her, the young women, and there aren't terrible consequences. They just, and the relationship doesn't work out. Like she doesn't stay with that guy that she lost her virginity to forever, which, you know. <laughs> so it's incredibly a lot like that. <laughs> book and a very like frank um, portrayal of, of a girl who's kind of like starting to understand herself sexually and no con no bad consequences and the relationship ends and she goes on and everything's fine. Like she doesn't get punished for having sexuality or presumably sexuality. that's what freaked people out. I think was that so, nothing yeah. bad happened outside broken heart or something. Like yeah. This. I mean I was addicted to um, kind of teenage books that were above my years, you know, so I think I don't know, I was totally in the seventh or eighth grade when Forever came out, but I'd already been reading books um, that were for older teenage girls, and the, all, you know, the girls all having sex, but then they were getting VD, and they were getting, they were having to run away from home. Terrible things were happening, and they were all getting pregnant or strung out, or, and I mean, I loved it. It was so exciting, you know, I loved it. I was like, oh God. But um, it was really remarkable that it was almost a little boring. <laughs> I mean, such a hoopla was made about it, and I remember when the book came out, somebody had it, and, the, the parts where they had sex were marked and we were passing it around the Catholic school that I went to. And I was like, I mean, I've read steamier stuff than this. You know, I, I was a little, I mean, I, I liked it. I liked the book very much, actually. Um, but it was funny that it wasn't necessarily, like, that scandalous, you know, right? Except that it, it was not, thank you, it was no flowers in the attic, right? Um, it was also banned. Yeah, oh, I'll read that one next year if I get banned. Would you, would you like to read, uh, God, it's really hard to pick which one. I all, I figured I would just read the part where, you know, they lose it, but then it's just too embarrassing to talk about how the teenager's penis growls. <laughs> I, I, and I don't want, I want you guys to enjoy that on your own privately. I don't want to ruin that for you. I want you to go forward and, and find this, this book on your own. So I'll just read this, this one part that I think, okay. Tommy Aronson's a boy who's kind of like a creep that she dates earlier on in the book, and Michael is the boy that she's in love with, who she did it with. We were sitting around the kitchen table the next day having Sunday brunch. I thought for sure that as soon as my parents saw me, they'd be able to tell. It's like right after she did it. But after a while, I realized that they were acting the same as always, so I guess my experience doesn't show after all. I spooned some cream cheese on my bagel and decorated the top with a few dots of lox. My father and Jamie pile their bagels high, but I can't eat mine that, that way. Mom is the same as me. She sort of mashes hers in, making a spread out of it. When the phone rang, Dad said, I'll get it. He can reach the wall phone from his seat at the table. Hello, who's calling, please? Just a minute. He covered the phone with a hand and said, it's for you, Cap. Who is it? Tommy Aronson. Tommy Aronson? I mouthed his name and my father nodded. I'll take it upstairs, I said. I picked up the extension in my parents' bedroom and cleared my throat before I said, hello, Catherine? Yes? This is Tommy Aronson, remember me? I remember. I'm home for the weekend. The weekend's just about over. I'm not going back until tomorrow morning. Have a nice trip. I see you haven't changed. Have you? Why don't you come out, uh, come out with me tonight and decide for yourself? Sorry, I can't make it. Oh, come on, I'll behave. It's not that. Then what? I'm going with someone. Oh, anyone I know? No. Well, in that case, what's your girlfriend's number? I have a lot of girlfriends. The little one, you know. Erica? That's the one. Her last name's small and she's listed in the book. I hung up before he could say anything else. The nerve of him coming back into my life today of all days and asking for Erica's number just to make me jealous as if I care one way or the other. I went back to the kitchen and sat down at the table. My cheeks were burning. That was Tommy Aronson, I said. We know, Mom said. What did he want, Jamie asked. That's her little brother. To go out tonight. Are you going? Of course not. I would have got dead with him. You used to like him, Jamie said. A long time ago, things have changed. Is Michael going to be your only boyfriend? For now, Mom answered before I could. She smiled and offered me another half bagel. I shook my head. The phone rang again. That Tommy can't take no for an answer, I said, picking it up. Hello? I sounded irritated. Cap? It was Michael. Oh, hi. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. I thought you were someone else. Hang on a second. I'll take it upstairs. 
How are you doing? He asked me when I picked up the extension. I'm fine, and you? Okay. I just wanted to tell you that I thought about you all night. Same here, about you that is. And that it was very special for me. Like, who has this experience with the other That's not the story. For me, too. My mother came, <laughs> romance novel for teenage girls. My mother came up to my room, came, came to my room that night. I cut this article off today's Times, she said, handing it to me. Oh, I also loved that, like, Judy Bloom's families were so different than my family. Like, the parents read, like, the New York Times and shared articles with the children. It was, like, so wild. I think it has a lot to say. You might find it interesting. I got comfortable in bed adjusting my lamp and looked at the article. Maybe mom could tell about me after all. The title was, What About the Right to Say No? And the subtitle was, Sexual Liberation. It was written by the director of medical clinics at Yale. He said that he always asks adolescents, am I still considered an adolescent? Four questions when he talks to them about sex. One, is sexual intercourse necessary for the relationship? Two, what, could, what should you expect from sexual intercourse? Three, if you should need help, where will you seek it? Four, have you thought about how this relationship will end? He went on <laughs> to explain each question. In his discussion of question two, he said that enjoyable lovemaking culminating in orgasm isn't easy. It usually requires mutual education. It takes time, effort, and patience to learn to make love. That made me feel better about last night. It's funny, <laughs> it's funny because I used to think if you read enough books, you'd automatically know how to do everything the right way. But reading and doing are not the same at all. Question three didn't interest me that much, so I jumped ahead to question four, which made me very angry. Why should I have to think about the end with Michael when we were just at the beginning? And I didn't like the way he said, rejection is rejection, whether we call it divorce, puppy love, or adolescent turmoil. Anyway, who says a relationship has to end? Right? <laughs> what did you think, Mom asked over breakfast? About what? That article? Oh, well, it was pretty good. Did you agree? Well, some of it, like a person shouldn't ever feel pushed into sex or that she has to do it to please someone. I'm glad you feel that way, Mom said. I'm answering you hypothetically, I told her, not personally. Yes, of course. Um, yeah, we'll stop there. <laughs>